Hello viewers, in today's class we are going to discuss one important problem from Dirac Delta function, right? So in our earlier videos we have already discussed a lot about uh, Dirac Delta function, right? So in this class uh, we will uh, evaluate this integral uh, involving the Dirac Delta function. So here we have the integral minus infinity to infinity and we have e raised to minus x square uh, delta of x square minus 1 uh, dx, right? And here we see that we have a function um, e raised to minus x square associated with this Dirac delta function, right? And uh, e raised to minus x square is the well-known uh, Gaussian function, right? So let us start. So viewers, uh, here uh, what we will do, right? See, here we have a quadratic function inside the Dirac delta function notation, right? So what we will do, I uh, will take uh, this quadratic function as f of x, right? So we have f of x is equal to x square minus 1. And let us take this function uh, as g of x, right? and g of x is the Gaussian function that is e raised to minus x square. So now uh, our integral it is uh, it can be written as minus infinity to infinity and here we have g of x and here we have delta of f of x and dx right. So now to move further, uh, we'll make use of an important property of Dirac delta function. So we know that uh, if we have a function f of x, uh, that is uh, if we have delta of f of x, then delta of f of x can be written as sigma and 1 over uh, the absolute value of f prime of x of i. And here we have delta of x minus x of i, right? So this is an important property related to a Dirac delta function. So we'll also elaborate this uh, property uh, when we uh, solve this integral. So now see, here we have some function f of x, right? And if we need to find out the delta of f of x, then delta of f of x can be written as summation. And here we have a 1 over mod of f prime of x of i delta of x minus x i, right? So here x i are the roots of, x i are the roots of or the solutions of the equation f of x is equal to 0, right? So here uh, we have this function f of x. So we'll take f of x is equal to 0 and we'll form an equation, right? And xi, this xi are the roots of this equation f of x is equal to 0, right? And uh, uh, after finding out the solutions of f of x is equal to 0, uh, we find the derivative of this function f of x that is f prime of x right and then uh, we calculate this derivative at these points right so we'll uh, we'll find out f prime of x of i right and then we calculate this quantity that is 1 over uh, mod of f prime of x i and then uh, we'll use this summation sign. So let us see how we can uh, apply this property to this integral. Now see here f of x is x square minus 1. So we will form an equation f of x is equal to 0 and that is x square minus 1 is equal to 0, right? So x square is equal to 1. So x is square root of 1. So x is now equal to plus minus 1, right? So we have two solutions of this equation. So the first solution is x1 that is equal to plus 1 
and the second solution is x2 that is minus 1 right so here we have uh, two solutions of f of x is equal to 0 right so in this uh, summation sign uh, will go from i is equal to 1 to 2 right and let us now find out the derivative of f of x right so f prime of x is d by dx of x square minus 1 so this is 2x because the derivative of x square is 2x and the derivative of 1 is 0 being a constant right so we have f prime of x is equal to 2x so now uh, let us find out uh, the quantity that is a mod of f prime of x1 and then f prime of x2 right so uh, f prime of x1 is a mod of f prime of plus 1 and then here a mod of f prime of x2 is the mod of f prime of minus 1 so here a uh, mod of f prime of 1 right so when we take uh, uh, x is equal to 1 in this expression then we have mod of 2 times 1 that is equal to mod of 2 that is simply 2 right and when we find mod of f prime of minus 1 then we take uh, x is equal to minus 1 in this expression so we have 2 times minus 1 that is mod of minus 2 so this is simply 2 right so now uh, this property can be written as delta of f of x and now uh, the value of i goes from 1 to 2 right so here i has two values because here we have two roots right x1 and x2 so we can now write 1 over uh, mod of f prime of x1 and here we have delta of x minus x1 then plus due to this summation sign we have 1 over mod of f prime of x2 and here we have delta of x minus x2 right so substituting the value of x1 and x2 we have mod of f prime of plus 1 here we have delta of x minus 1 and here we have 1 over mod f prime of x2 x2 is minus 1 and here we have delta of x plus 1 because x2 is minus 1 so minus and minus becomes plus right and mod of f prime of 1 is given by 2 so here we have uh, 2 delta of x minus 1 and here also we have mod of f prime of minus 1 is 2 and here we have delta of x plus 1 right so now we can write it as half taking half common so we have delta of x minus 1 plus delta of x plus 1 right so now delta of f of x so f of x is x square minus 1 right so delta of x square minus 1 is half delta of x minus 1 plus delta of x plus 1 so now this integral i can be written as minus infinity to infinity g of x is e raised to minus x square and uh, for delta of f of x we have this expression so we can take half common here and we have delta of x minus 1 plus delta of x plus 1 and here we have dx right now taking half outside the integral we have half then we have minus infinity to infinity and uh, we can write here two integrals the first one is e raised to minus x square delta of x minus 1 plus integral minus infinity to infinity e raised to minus x square and delta of x plus 1 dx here also we have dx and 
uh, now we have to find the values of these two integrals so now to get the values of these two integrals uh, we'll use an important result from a Dirac delta function that is minus infinity to infinity if we have here say g of x and here we have delta of x minus a dx uh, then this is simply equal to g of a right so we calculate the value of this function g of x at x is equal to a right so g of a is the value of this integral so if we take this integral then g of x is e raised to minus x square and a is our one right and in the second integral uh, g of x is again e raised to minus x square and our a is minus one right so now uh, the value of uh, this these two integrals can be written as uh, g of uh, a so here uh, g of x is e raised to minus x square a is one so here we have g of one then here we have g of uh, minus one right so now we have half and g of uh, one can be obtained by taking uh, here uh, x is equal to 1 so we have e raised to minus 1 square and here we have e raised to minus and for x we have minus 1 so we have minus 1 square right so this is half and this is um, 1 square is 1 so we have e raised to minus 1 here also we have e raised to minus 1 because minus 1 square is plus mm -hmm. right so this is half and this is 2 times e raised to minus 1 and now the value of this integral i is 2 and 2 get cancelled so we are left with e raised to minus 1 that is 1 over e right so viewers the value of this integral is 1 over e